with your first bottle that I want you to identify which one is real mm-hmm. and which one is fake is a 1989 Petrus Pomerol Grand Cru. Okay. How well can you identify when a wine is fake? Fucking happy Friday. <sighs> August was a shit month. It was fucking a long You know, month. five week months, you know, they sneak up on you. They do. What I'd really love to do as part of this First of all, is to actually show you what we're drinking and what we're really into at the moment. Yes. Just because, like, I feel like with my mind reviews, it's really cool that you're moving at 100 miles an hour yeah. all the time, rather than like saying, you know what? Out of like doing all of that moving around, this has been my favorite thing. So the entire idea behind this is essentially, first of all, really highlighting what we fucking love. What would the yes. highlights been from the month? Especially yeah. because I'm not gonna lie, August sucked. August sucked hard for me. Yeah. Second of all, I think we don't talk enough about food in terms yeah. of how it fits into wine and mm. spirits. Yeah, I mean, we are wine for the people, spirits for the people, but yeah. we only talk about the beverage rather than the actual thing that generally goes with the beverage. Yeah. Historically, and what it's always been about is the, the marriage between the two things. Exactly, so I want to include some more food on this, which I'm going to coin yeah. as Friday Bites. It's Friday, so yeah. let's just have a bit of fun. Steak tartare, let's go. Rick Stein's Steak Tartare. It serves too, and it's easy. This is the whole thing. That's perfect. That's what we're looking this for. This is what for we're doing. Okay, so all we need to get is, of course, the steak. We need to get capers, shallots, extra virgin olive oil, cornichons, Tabasco. Righty, let's do this. It's a bit of a controversial hot take, but it is a hot take about steak tartare. Okay. Okay. So a lot of people have like different condiments when it comes to like steak tartare. Some people love bread. Some people love brets, crackers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like for me, it's sour cream and chive Pringles. I think they are the most elite crisp that you can have with steak tartare. <sighs> I've never agreed with you more, Henry. Really? The only issue with the Pringle is that yep. they're not structurally integral. Scoop Hold on. straight. I have a solution for this, don't you stress, all right? And it actually came from Brendan. Brendan came up with this solution. Okay. So you're absolutely right. Pringles, the branded Pringles, please don't sue us, are structurally in sound. Yeah. However, they're Aldi cousins. Little thicker, little larger. Mm. They've got more structural integrity and the sour cream and chives flavor is in my opinion, Better. This was all introduced to me by Brendan when we went around Australia and he was like, I shop at Aldi because I save money. And this was back in the day when there was like only four Aldis in Australia. Exactly. As part of this adventure, you need to find an Aldi. Let's go. go. This is what it's all about. Snack stacks. Mustard with champagne. We just fucking wine for the people. So, steak tartare. Mm-hmm. This is going to be the, the pairing for today with this beautiful Pinot Meunier. Oh my god, it's going to be good for a Friday. And, oh my days, I'm so ready for a bit of a snack stack. Mm. I'm here to see what the fuss is all about with the snack stack. Mate, absolutely. I'm working with our great friends at Meatsmith for this, mm-hmm. and I'm so glad that they actually gave us some advice about what cut of beef to use. Oh! Oh, it's just so good. Holy shit, I kind of don't want to cut it up. Go just on. like eat it like an apple? Yeah. Alrighty, so it yeah, says yeah. to finally dice this. Now he introduces you, this is your fun night, I have to say. Let's do the love hearts. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is how you propose to a carnivore. Totally. <laughs> Look at that! Tate in this lovely little round. Let's go. Here we go. And this is why they're so incredible with steak tate. Just line them up. They're oh. already in the queue. They're already ready to go. Oh, they are structurally integral. On each side of our love heart. <laughs> so that is a steak tartare. That looks fucking good. You've got to be on Vogue, otherwise you're out. Yeah, 100%. So for me, the biggest thing that's on Vogue right now is tequila. High 
Kendall Jenner, hello. There's actually some beautiful tequilas. This is a, a sensational small producer. And I also want to do it represent tequila in a way which mm -hmm. is really refined and elegant rather yeah. than like, we're going to make a margarita, which is yeah. delicious. Fucking love margaritas. You who, love margaritas. Who doesn't love a fucking margarita? Who doesn't Honestly, love a margarita? You, you don't have a, a soul if you don't like a margarita. So this is my cocktail, I think, of the month. Mm -hmm. Especially heading into spring. Mm -hmm. Then we got Aperol. Aperol is in place of our quote Campari yes. in this Negroni recipe. Again, just 30 mil. One shot of tequila. One so shot of Aperol. When I was a bartender, the monkey. Man, yeah. <laughs> and then finally, the question is like, what vermouth do you use? Because I think again, we're, this is wine for the people. We're going to bring out some wine related well, stuff. We, exactly. Yeah. We're not using sweet vermouth. We're using rosé. Um, yeah, man. Partly because it's a rosita. Yeah, exactly. We've gone so, with like lighter flavors, so may as well. So then, mm. I don't need an ice scoop. Ooh, can you fill this up with ice in the meantime? Absolutely. Always use more ice than you think. Well, yeah, because the more ice you have, the colder it remains, the less dilution occurs. Mm. So a lot of people are like, only a couple of cubes of ice. Actually, fill it with ice. Yeah, overfill it with ice. I love that kind of like coppery hue. And My question is, do you want mandarin as a garnish or do you want grapefruit as a garnish? I want mandarin as a garnish. If I went to a bar and saw this, I'd be like, what the fuck? But if I'm, yeah, yeah. But I'm at home, I'm like, it's sick. You're like, this is delicious. This is what, yeah, you can fuck around a little bit. See, more. now you can, you can take that out. You don't need that. But that is a damn fine Rosita. And like, <laughs> I think we should now, through the, through the magic of movies, migrate to the couch. And then we're gonna find out if this actually works with the steak tartare. Uh, I'm excited. And we Amazing, so through this magic, we're now here, steak tartare. Are you happy to eat that with like no cutlery? Fuck yeah. Yeah, okay. This is my cutlery. Man, this is your cutlery. Dude, I'm so stoked. Happy Friday, Noel. Oh my God, so good. Happy fucking Friday. That mandarin hardcore was pretty awesome, I'm not gonna lie. Oh yeah. See, it's like bright, refreshing. Yeah, that tequila really pops as well. Really pops. Yum, 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 yum. I have like a full pack schedule because part of Friday Bites is also going to be going over what has kind of like piqued our interest during the month. We're just going to be going over like some pretty crazy stuff that's mm -hmm. been going on in mm -hmm. the wine industry, not only in Australia, but around the world. Mm -hmm. There's been some crazy ass stuff happening in this First story, which I have called Fake Ass Wines, Kinea Rudy Kania one. one. Mm -hmm. So the guy from Sour Grapes. Big old wine fraud guy. Big old wine fraud guy. Yeah, so basically right? he was make, making imitation products of high-end wines that were being traded on the marketplace, you know. Yeah, he got put in prison for like 10 years mm -hmm. and then he served his his time mm -hmm. and now he's been deported because he was an Indonesian citizen. Mm -hmm. So he got deported back to Indonesia. Since then, obviously since Sour Grapes blew up, he's been getting some, some pretty mad press. So he was hired to do a wine dinner in Singapore. As part of that wine dinner, what they did is they brought like a, a 1992 Petrus and he was allowed to taste it and then make a copy of it and they tasted them side by side blind mm -hmm. to see which people would prefer. And he did this with like multiple wines, like Latash, like Ball. So the, wines, like the Crown right? de la Crema of <clears throat> the elite, foods, yeah. right? The Elite. Everyone preferred his wines. That's they tasted fucking like hilarious. Because they were fresher. Yeah. They tasted more youthful. Mm -hmm. And that like showed you what kind of wines, I guess, the people who were there mm -hmm. were into. But it's brought up a really interesting thing that I'm going to test okay. you on because I need to. It's actually how well can you identify when a wine is fake? Okay. Because apparently over 20% of the world's wine is fake. Completely insane. So I've actually found four different photos. Let's see it's more just to show you like how fucking good these fakes are getting. Okay, cool. Love like, it. and like, I'll tell you which one is real and why and how like diligent you have to be. But your first bottle that I want you to identify which one is real mm -hmm. and which one is fake is a 1989 Petrus Pomerol Grand Cru. Okay. I want you to give your reasoning. So the natural reaction mm. is to go for the right hand label because there's a little bit more weather yeah. on it. So it's been really well weathered. So that one looks like the legitimate one because okay. of that. But the thing is, you got to think about it like in this way, is like they're probably, since it is, it's Petrus, mm -hmm. it is the Pomerol of Pomerol. It's the Pomerol. Uh, so you're probably looking after it a little bit more. Okay. So that makes me think that the weathered one is the is fake, the fake one. You've gone like full Sherlock Holmes on this. Yeah. I'm really into yeah, it. Yeah, I'm, right, I'm, I'm deep in the rabbit hole. Yeah. So is that your is that your final answer? I'm going to go final answer. The, the more weathered and kind of like coffee one is the is the fake one. Is the fake. Yeah. You're fucking bang on. 
It is the fake one. The reason though, has nothing to do with the weathered label. It has everything to do with the colors of ink. Okay, yes. Are incorrect. Okay, yeah, They're of not the ones used by Petrus at that time yeah. in the winery. The red is a little bit too red, mm -hmm. and the black is a little bit too black. Yes, yeah, They're actually contrast. the wrong pigment. Yeah, okay. And so everything else about it, the paper is the right age, mm -hmm. which is nuts. Yeah, so got some so they've, old paper. They've used 1989 paper. Great, right? love it. The same gradient as Petrus, mm -hmm. exactly the same, but they fucked up the colors on the label. That's so funny. Which is wild, dude. That's so funny. Wild. Obviously, in mm. wine, it doesn't just extend to like great table wines. We've obviously no. got a huge amount of like beautiful vintage, like ports and sherry yep. and all that stuff. So this is Fonseca, incredible port producer. And we've got two bottlings here. Mm -hmm. Which one is real and which one is fake? I think this is a little bit harder than the Pomeroy. Mm. There's a few things going on here. Yeah, there are. The two bottles. Mm. The labels on the right is placed higher up mm -hmm. and the other one on the left. And then there's also the neck label, which is one is over the top and one is underneath. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do the double bluff again. The fact that that one's over the top makes me think it, that it's real. So I'm gonna call okay. that one being the fake one. But you're gonna call that one being the fake That's one again? That's the fake one, yeah. Okay, yeah, because you're right. <laughs> you're bang on. <laughs> it is, it is the fake one from 1977. Yes. But it's bottled quite recently. Yeah, absolutely. So it's actually a modern closure. Yeah. It's also the wrong bottle. So yeah. you actually, what you need- Oh, because you've got the- like, You've the, got a punt there. You've got a punt on the neck and that one doesn't have one. Yeah. It's actually a more modern bottling. Yeah, and you've also got the- um, by, by Fonseca, the, yeah. the stamp as well, yeah. which I'm sure is probably like, you know, part of like Ports and Porto's actual rules of bottling. Yeah. So the crazy thing here is to actually that's know so what wild. the producer's doing. Yeah, of course. Because that's actually a terrible fake. Oh, it's terrible. But the fact that people don't know is what gets them. You think about it this way. The people that are buying this stuff, yeah. they're fucking idiots with well, lots of money. Really? You just think they're idiots with lots of money? 100%. The only cool, people man. who's like wanting to buy the, like, this bottle of port because it's old and expensive is mm -hmm. because they're trying to make a buck off it right. rather than they're actual like, wine people, okay. you know? Yeah, like, I feel that. And the last thing on my chopping block for this month, I don't even know how to frame this. Mm -hmm. my, my question to you is, based on your personality, what kind of wine do you think you are? Because then I've basically gone on the internet and like done this by both Zodiac and Myers-Briggs personality. And right. by the way, I think we should put together like, a Wine yeah. for the People Discord personality test that tells you what wine you are. That's good, that's good. I think this can be done. Let's I, start with Myers-Briggs. Yeah, so I'm introverted. You're an INTP. INTP, yeah. yeah. What was that? So you're introverted. You are- Intuitive. Intuitive, yes. You are thinking yep. and, and perceiving. perceiving. So introverted, intuitive, mm -hmm. uh, thinking, perception. So yeah. it's reacting to the world around me, but dealing with the kind of world around me in a very kind of introverted way. Yeah, 100%. so very self. So it's like I'm not going to be jumping out the bus. I'm not. So you can take okay. out muskets and go okay. Tramina immediately. Okay. All those kind of aromatic whites, they're gone. Yeah, I love how you think like about this. and things like this. Yeah, they, they, like, anything you pick up and go, oh my god, that's that's very extroverted and effusive. Yeah. So we're going for a more reserved. I'm going to. I'm just going to straight out of the game. I'm just going to go yeah. fucking Mataro. Your Mataro. Mavera, Monastrel, <laughs> like whatever, like whatever that kind of feels in. So blending. Like, you know, deals with problems in a very intellectual, in introverted way. I don't know, I think that's what I'm, that I'm vibing with. So I think it's like, oh, you could go to Grenache, but it's like, oh, it's far too aromatic. It's far too like, looking at the glass. <laughs> anyway, mate, happy Friday. Let's sign out. Guys. Also, this was fucking delicious. It's fucking delicious. But if you feel like we missed a, a wine story for the month, let us know. I think we need to get this personality quiz on the Discord channel. Oh uh, yeah, I'm super keen. Well, I, I think a lot of people out there probably haven't had the Mines Briggs test, so getting people to do no, that. No, but I think you do a personality test mm -hmm. and like, like just do it yeah. and get people to take a short personality quiz and then That's tell good. them what variety they are. All right guys, come and tell us what your uh, Myers-Briggs yeah. is and then <laughs> you sucked in your yeah. fucking Zinfandel. Uh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just a really like complete clickbait approach. Hell yeah, let's just finish this off. See you Bye. next month.